Hey guys, it's Annie Yorks from The Flower Box and I am excited to bring you a super colorful and cute tutorial today. Today I am making Tutti Fruity cookies. Now these cookies are fun for a summer celebration. They're great for birthday parties and with all of the puns out there for Valentine's Day, they also make a great Valentine treat as well. Now in this video, I'm excited to be sharing with you some easy ways for you to add texture and interest to your cookies. So let's cookie it up. In this video, I am using royal icing to decorate my cookies. I'm going to be using two icing consistencies, this thicker piping consistency and a thinner flooding consistency to outline and flood my cookies. I have a tip number two on my icing bag and I'm just outlining around the pair and then I'm going to flood in generously using the 10 second flood icing. If you're new to cookie decorating, definitely check out the link below to my video on how to make royal icing. Now, the first way to add a little bit of texture or interest to these fruit cookies is to just add a highlight in another color. So for example, on this pear cookie, I have flooded in using neon green and I'm adding the highlight of the leaf green to just add some interest and dimension to the cookie. This is probably the easiest way to add texture to your cookie. Now this design is pretty simple. I'm just going to pipe a stem using the brown piping icing, add an accent line at the top of the pear, and I've sized down the tip on my leaf green to a tip number 1.5 to add the veins on the leaf. This cookie is so cute and simple and it's already done. Let's take a look at the orange cookie and for this cookie we're going to add a highlight like we did on the pear but I'll show you one other way to get some texture. So again I'm outlining the cookie using piping icing and tip number two and now I'm ready to flood in. I just sectioned off that highlight area because it's going to be a little bit bigger than the pear. I'm adding a large highlight on the right side of the and I'm just flooding in generously using the Sunset Orange Flood Icing. Now I'm adding a highlight using the Peach Flood Icing and that's going to just melt together and create a flat surface. Once that section has dried, I'll go back and add in the flooding for the leaf. That just prevents any color bleeding between those icing areas. I'll even out with my scribe if I need to. So I'm just tapping the icing into place and getting a nice even seam between those two icing areas. I'll let that leaf dry and now we're ready for some details. Again, I'm gonna add the stem. I'm just using the brown piping icing at the top and adding a little piped line for some dimension. Then I'll add the leaf and I'm adding the veins again using tip number 1.5. I just like the thinner details on those areas. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more texture to this orange. Because an orange kinda has a bumpy or dimpled texture, I'm gonna use the Sunset Orange Flood Icing, not piping, flood, and I'm just gonna add some tiny dots on the section of the orange just to give it a little bit of texture and bumpiness. And I'm using the flood icing because I want those dots to stay nice and rounded. I don't want them to have little points on them. That's why I don't use the piping icing. So that's another way to add texture to your cookies. Now let's take a look at the peach. I'm outlining the peach using the leaf green on the leaves and Georgia peach on the main section of the peach. And I'm just flooding in that first section on the left nice and generously. But this one is also getting some texture to create that fuzzy skin that peaches normally have. I have some white sanding sugar that I'm going to shake on the wet section of this peach. Now, if you're looking to recreate these cookies, all these cutters and the sanding sugar 
are in our Tutti Fruity Cookie Decorating Kit. You can find that on flowerbox.com. So I have a coffee filter underneath the cookie and I can just easily shake that off. I'm gonna come back in once that section has a chance to dry. I just wanna see that natural seam uh, between those two sections. So once that left section has a chance to dry for about an hour in front of the fan, I'm gonna come back in and flood the right section. Add a little highlight with white flood icing. And again, I'm just gonna cover that wet area with the white sanding sugar. It adds sparkle and texture. And then once I'm all done sanding the cookies, I'll just funnel that sugar back into the container using the coffee filter. So that's just a great way to keep your space clean and not waste any of the sugar. Now that both sections on the peach are set up, I'm ready to flood in the green leaves. So just real generous flood with the leaf green icing. Let that dry and you can come back and add the details. These are super quick and easy because I think the sugar is really the interesting part on this cookie. So I just added the brown stem and I'm gonna add some veins on the lower section. I just decided to add veins only on half of the leaf just to do it differently. Um, give it something different. So you can do veins on both sides, but I thought it might be kind of cool just to show veins on one side of the leaf. Let's take a look at this banana. I love these banana cookies. They're kind of skinnier than the other ones, just making them look super tasty and ready to eat. So the first thing I want to do is outline the outside of the banana and then I just want to add the seam uh, in the middle of the banana using some piping icing. Again, we're going to flood these in stages. We're just going to allow that first section to dry so we get that natural line in between those icing areas. I'm going to add that little highlight just using a couple lines of white that just gives a little bit of shine to the banana skin. Now here's one of my favorite ways to add texture to the cookie and it's called splattering. So I'm gonna take a dot of Buckeye Brown gel icing and I just added a dropper and a half of alcohol. Now I'm using Everclear, but if you don't have that in your house, you could certainly use a clear vanilla or lemon extract. Um, you just want to mix that up until that dot of food gel has completely dissolved. Now I put on a glove so that I keep my hand nice and clean and I have a little craft brush and I'm just going to dip that brush into that gel and alcohol mixture and using my finger I'm just going to run the tip of my finger across the bristles creating those splatters on the banana. Now, if you've never done this before, we do have a cookie splatter practice kit on flowerbox.com. You might wanna pick it up. It has the brush, the little dish, it does have a glove, and it even has a coaster for you to practice. I was doing the splattering on this Genie mini mat. This is seven by seven inches. And I love these mats, they're wipeable. They're great for when I teach online classes just because it helps me know where to place my cookies. And I just love that I can wipe it off. It's easy cleanup. Um, it's also a great background for airbrushing. So let me show you how you can use this mini mat. It's included in the Tutti Fruity cookie decorating kit. If you're looking to get one of those, it is in this kit, which is really cool. So now we're gonna jump to the pineapple and I'm just again outlining those different icing areas. I have golden yellow icing picked out for the pineapple and I'm using both the leaf green and the neon green for the leaves at the top. If you are looking to match these icing colors, find the icing color guide on the blog post for this cookie set 
and I break down exactly what colors you'll need and about how much of each color you should make. Now this pineapple cookie is a tall cookie and so it doesn't fit traditionally in the stencil genie like most cookies would. So I'm going to just offset this cookie and put my frame down first. I'll set the scales stencil on top and now I'm ready to airbrush the scales onto the pineapple. Now these scales are really for mermaid cookies but they actually create kind of the perfect um, texture look for a pineapple. So my other suggestion for adding texture to your cookies is airbrushing it onto the surface of the icing. I used an orange and yellow mix for the airbrush color and it just works perfectly on top of the golden yellow. Now that I have the pineapple flooded in and airbrushed, I can finish flooding the leaves on the top. I'll pipe a little line inside those leaves just to help the icing sit up. It really reduces any cracks or dents or craters in those small icing areas. And I'll let the neon green leaves dry for about 30 minutes before I come back in and flood the leaf green leaves. So just letting those dry just to keep those icing areas nice and separated. Now these Tutti Frutti kits are super cute on their own, um, but you know me, I love to add a cute little smiling face to just about any cookie. So let me show you if you want to make these Tutti Frutti cookies oh so cutie, let me show you how to add a smiling face. I have black flood icing and I'm just gonna add a small uh, dot for the eyes and then I have my white flood icing. I've put a tip number one on the front of the icing bag just to keep that little catch light ultra small. And now that smile is just gonna finish off the face. Before we're all done, I am gonna add rosy cheeks. So I have some carnation pink crystal color dust and my round Wilton brush. I'm just gonna dip that into the dust, dab it off on to the lid of the container and then in a circular motion, I'm going to blush those cheeks. So that's how you can add a cute little face to your Tutti Frutti cookies um, if you're looking to make them smile. Okay guys, this is our last cookie. This is my last tip that I'm gonna show you for adding texture to your cookies and it will be on the rind of the watermelon. So let's get this cookie outlined first. I love this new cookie from Ann Clark. The bite out of the watermelon has such a fun rounded texture. This is just so cute and whimsical. I'm going to flood in the main section first. So I did add a white line of flood icing and now I'm flooding in generously the rest of that section of the watermelon using rose pink flood icing. If you notice any weird wonkiness between the pink and the white icing, just add one more line of flood to clean up that area. Now it's time to add the fun texture and this is in the rind. I'm using leaf green icing, the leaf green flood icing, and I'm just flooding little squares inside that small rind section. And then I'll go back in and add the neon green flood icing. And while the icing is still wet, I'm just gonna tap the icing into place, clean up any of those little seams, and then I'm gonna marble between each of those seams. So I have my scribe tool and I'm just going up and down, wiggling the tip of the pointy scribe through that icing just to marble it and give it a really interesting watermelon texture. Now this cookie is almost done, I'll pipe a line of leaf green icing on the seam between the rind and the watermelon and I'm going to add some seeds but because this is a tutti frutti set our watermelon seeds are going to be heart shaped so I just have two little teardrops of black icing that match up to make those little teardrop shaped watermelon seeds. 
This cookie set was so much fun to make. I really hope you go bananas for it. <laughs> if you are looking to recreate these Tutti Frutti cookies, I would be so flattered. Definitely tag me at the Flower Box Shop on Instagram or Facebook, and I'd love to see what you create. If you're looking for more details on how to make these cookies, find the kit and the full icing guide on flowerbox.com. That's all for today. Until next time, happy decorating.